Hey guys, Aaron here. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you a common coolant link on these 3.5 liter EcoBoost engines. Um, there's actually two places where the coolant can leak. The most common I see is on the back fitting, uh, which is right here. Um, this metal pipe actually goes into the side of the turbocharger, and there's an O-ring that seals this metal pipe. Um, they leak a lot. It's actually a serviceable fitting you can buy from Ford. And a lot of the times they get mistaken. Um, these lines get mistaken for cooling lines because the, pool, the coolant will come down and it'll hang around these lines. And a lot of people think that the coolant is actually leaking from these, but it's not. It's leaking from up top. So uh, today I'm going to show you how I replace them, how I remove the turbocharger, and how I do the job. So before we begin, let's start with the tools you'll need to get the job done. All right, so here's the tools you're going to need. Some degreaser, WD-40, a magnetic tray just to hold all your hardware, maybe your tools. Um, trim removal tool for the plastic rivets on the panel. Uh, 3 8 ratchet, quarter inch ratchet, half inch ratchet. Now I'm also going to be using my uh, impact uh, driver and my little power tor torque wrench here uh, just to help speed things along the way. 15 millimeter, 19 millimeter, 10 millimeter, half inch if you're going to be removing your exhaust manifold. 14 millimeter, 10 millimeter short, 7 millimeter, a T40 tor or T47 Torx, T40 Torx, 7 30 seconds socket, and a 5 millimeter socket if you're going to be removing your exhaust studs and replacing those. And there's also these water connectors that go onto the turbocharger. There's two that go onto the turbocharger, and then there's two that seal both pipes coming from the engine to the turbocharger. I recommend you replace these. Um, seems that with high mileage, just in touching the coolant lines is enough to break the seal inside and they leak. So make sure you pick some of these up too. All right, so the first thing I like to do, of course, is just disconnect the battery cable. I can disconnect either the positive or negative um, just to prevent the vehicle from starting when we have the turbocharger off. Obviously, that'd be pretty bad. All right, so now that we got that done, we're gonna need to remove the inner fender uh, wheel well here. To do that, you're gonna need a combination of um, five millimeters or 5.5 millimeter socket. I believe a, let's see, this is a 730 seconds works as well. Um, and then there's a couple of pop rivets that you're gonna need to move on the inner fender. Um, and to do that, I got myself a little rivet trim removal tool, helps out. A lot if uh, you don't have one a flat blade screwdriver should work all right well. so once you got your fender your wheel fender down uh, there's a couple connections on the driver's side that you're gonna need to remove passenger side if you're working on that there's nothing really you need that that needs to come off the fender just take your plastic little trim knife um, or some pliers and kind of pull up to make sure you don't break them um, and they'll just kind of set aside by themselves all right, so as you can see with the fender off, uh, the turbocharger is a lot easier to get to. What I like to do before removing any kind of hardware is just to soak down what we're gonna be removing with some WD-40. Hit up the hose clamps um, with some WD-40. It's gonna help them come off. And then also uh, the coolant lines that we're gonna be removing, one on top here and then one on the back. Um, if you just spray a little WD-40 on these fittings, it helps them come out and don't forget about your two exhaust nuts behind the turbocharger. All right, so with everything sprayed down, we're ready to remove um, our intake hoses. I like to remove the charge air cooler coupler. To do that, go ahead, take your seven millimeter, loosen up both hose clamps, and you can kind of pinch the coupler and it'll come out. That way the charge pipe can just stay in place. Um, and then your uh, intake clamp. I like to remove the side on the turbocharger and then we'll go up top and loosen the hose clamp that goes to the air cleaner and we should be able to pull this whole ducting off of the turbocharger. All right, so up on, on top here, remove this hose clamp or loosen it, loosen that hose clamp and we can actually just take our air box and kind of set it aside. And this is the pipe that goes to the turbocharger. Once you have that loose, you can just simply pull it up a little bit, an inch or two, and it'll swing out of the way so we'll have enough room to remove our turbo. All right, so with our two intake hoses out of the way, you can see uh, we actually have enough room to remove our turbocharger. You don't have to remove this whole pipe. You can just kind of push it back. There is one little connection. It's a little hard to see, but there's a connection right here um, that goes into some kind of mount. You can just simply pull it out about an inch and that will give you enough, um, enough to, to get it out. So 
Next I'm going to work on the cooling system, uh, the two cooling lines to remove them. It's pretty simple. Go ahead and grab yourself a pick and there is a clip inside of here. Uh, this little connector that we're going to be replacing and all you do is just get, get a real sharp pick and kind of pick up this clip and it'll come out, which it just did. If you are replacing the connector, then the connector comes with new clips, but I always like to keep them around for extras. They're, they're nice little retaining clips. So um, go ahead and remove that clip. And before you remove this line, you're gonna need to drain the cooling system. I already have, but to do that, remove your lower radiator hose. There's a retaining clip right here. Same procedure. Um, unfortunately, on this 2015, there's no uh, petcock to drain the radiator, so it's a little bit messy. Um, I understand that the earlier model F-150s, the 2011 through 13, I believe, do have a petcock, so this one does not. Go ahead and remove your radiator hose and try to catch as much coolant as you can. And then that way, when we go to remove this hose, uh, water doesn't come out and it'll be a lot cleaner. Now, one little trick to remove this line. Um, I like to just simply grab it with my hand, move it back and forth three or four times, and it should come out. And you're gonna have a little bit of coolant come out because unfortunately, this point of the cooling system is below our radiator, so you are gonna have some coolant come out. I like to just take this line and kind of bend it out of the way a little bit. Put it over this ear if you can, so it stays out of the way. I'm just gonna let this drain for a little bit. All right, so next thing I like to do is remove the two nuts on the exhaust. Um, to do that, I use a little swivel uh, ratchet and a 15 millimeter short wall socket. Um, this is a half inch drive. It's the only little swivel I have, but it works because the nut is so close to the back fender here. If you do have, a, or the back uh, bulkhead, if you do have a short open up inch wrench, uh, you might be able to get to that, but this is my preferred method. All right, so now that we got the exhaust off, the only two things that we need to remove before removing the um, turbo are these two bolts. These are the oil lines right here, um, the oil supply and the oil return line for the turbocharger. Um, there's two bolts and a gasket in between. Using a T45 Torx bit, we're gonna need to remove those two bolts. And then once that's done, I'm gonna grab my pick and remove the um, clip that's in this quick disconnect on the back side of the turbocharger. This is actually the one that, that is leaking. So um, when we go to remove the turbo, this metal line is actually gonna stay stationary. We're not gonna remove it. We're simply just gonna take the turbocharger, head that way. We're gonna have to wiggle it a little bit and uh, with a little bit of luck, that line will break free. All right, so we got our oil and coolant lines removed. Um, our exhaust is off, intake is off. So next thing to do, um, if you haven't already, remove your top uh, boost reference line for your wastegate and then remove these three bolts. They're on there pretty good. Uh, I like to use an impact if you can get it in there. If not, I use this, uh, just a little uh, T47 Torx bit with a swivel, kind of helps since uh, this back bolt kind of runs close to the fender. Um, you can bust it off that way. All right, so I got the turbocharger off. One quick note, when you go to remove it, remember this line's still gonna be pressed into the fitting. Um, it takes about 20, 30 seconds of rocking the turbo back and forth. You're definitely gonna have to push the exhaust out of the way a little bit. It'll clear, um, but just work it back and forth. Don't give it any hard, hard uh, real pressure because this line um, does have another connection this way that we're not going to be touching. Um, so once you rock it back and forth a little bit, it will come free. It may take a little bit, um, but one thing I also like to do is since this is a water line and it's going to be dripping, I like to cover our oil lines just to make sure nothing falls in. We definitely don't want any water contamination inside of our oil system. Um, and then also inspect all your studs. I do have a video on how to repair the studs if they break off and how to check for leaks, which is very common on these high mileage EcoBoost motors. So with the turbocharger off, you can see there's the top fitting and then there's a side fitting that's leaking. See, it's pretty ugly. So let's go take this on the bench and we're gonna re replace these fittings. 
All right, so we got the turbo in a vise and got our new fittings ordered up directly from Ford. I'll put the part numbers in the description of this video. And you're also gonna need um, a gasket for your oil lines as well. So grab a 19 millimeter socket, just put it right over there and break them loose. All right, so I did get uh, both fittings put back on. One thing I like to do is throw a little bit of grease inside that fitting, helps the line go in there and seat properly. The new fittings do come with new retaining clips, so you won't have to put your old ones back in, which is pretty nice. And then also definitely don't forget about your uh, new oil gasket down here. I like to put that on once the turbocharger is on the vehicle. You also need to pick up a new gasket. Uh, what's nice about this gasket is it has little tangs that hold on to the turbocharger that way when you're struggling to get it onto the engine uh, the gasket stays in place these gaskets are a one-time use they're a crush type gasket so don't try to reuse your old one you will end up having leaks for sure so once you got everything bolted back on you're going to want to make sure that you torque these three bolts down to 28 foot pounds that's ford's recommend torque spec um, and it's pretty much reverse procedure from there so i'm going to go ahead fill it up full of coolant change the oil fire it up and I'm gonna leave the wheel well off just so I could check for leaks, any exhaust leaks, um, oil leaks, or you know I'm gonna check our new fittings and then take it for a test drive. So I hope this video has helped you guys out. If it has, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave something in the comment section and I'll check you guys out next time.